Sweet. Um, so today I'm presenting on spinal cord injuries and women's sexual health. Um, so first I'm going to briefly define what a spinal cord injury is. So according to the Mayo Clinic, a spinal cord injury is damage to any part of the spinal cord or nerves at the end of the spinal canal. And what this causes is, is permanent change in strength, sensation, and other bodily functions below the site of injuries. So oftentimes what this looks like is someone being in a wheelchair, someone losing the ability to feel or move their legs, or even the ability to feel or um, experience the pleasure from clitoral stimulation. Um, but everyone's sexual health is important. I chose this study in this line of research because I think that disabled people's sex lives are understudied and undervalued. Um, from an evolutionary standpoint, uh, sexual relationships are important for, towards pair bonding and overall satis uh, roma uh, relationship satisfaction. And people with, who are disabled should not be excluded from this practice. Um, previous research on the sexuality of people with spinal cord injuries shows that women with spinal cord injuries show low levels of sexual dysfunction but moderate to poor sex lives. This means that many women with spinal cord injuries have the ability to have sex, um, positive sex lives, but for some reason, um, in practice, do not have them. Secondly, around 50% of women with spinal cord injuries um, are able to reach orgasm through clitoral stimulation. So this is much lower than the national average, and that probably reflects damage to the spinal canal and uh, clitoral nerve endings. Um, and lastly, nearly all women with spinal cord injuries wish that they were given more information from their doctors about their sex lives when they were originally in treatment. Um, this was a study and literally 100% of participants said that they received, would wish they received more information. So, what my study, Sexual Satisfaction in Women with Spinal Cord Injuries, attempts to do is to find this, this information and to try and explore what women's sex uh, with spinal cord injury sex lives really are. So the study was published in Spinal Cord Journal, and it was out of Spain. What they did is they took women from a spinal cord center where people live and receive treatment, and they gave them a questionnaire. Uh, what the study seeks to do is first describe the sex lives of women um, with spinal cord injuries, to again fill that information gap, and secondly, to find which factors correlate with sexual activity in these women, to see which, um, what might cause women with spinal cord injuries to have active sex lives and what might hinder it. So the participants, they were 32 women, all from that one center. Their age was between 18 and 65 years old with a mean age of 42.8, and they all had a spinal cord injury. Now, spinal cord injuries are of many different kinds, but in this case, they tried to sample women with many different types of spinal cord injuries to get a representative sample. Uh, the methods, they gathered a descriptive questionnaire, then they analyzed the results and found the factors that correlate with sexuality, uh, sexual activity. So here are the results. Um, the descriptive results showed that 84.4% of women in the study had sex before their spinal cord injury. In comparison, 71.9% had sex after it. So this shows that most women with spinal cord injuries at least attempt to have sex after their injury. So um, this is definitely a topic that deserves to be studied and uh, something that you know happens in practice. Also, uh, this bursts the stereotypes that women with disabilities and people in wheelchairs don't have sex because many of them do. Second, or thirdly, 61% um, of women in the study had sex just as often as they did before their spinal cord injury um, after it. So this shows, again, this busts bust those stereotypes and shows that you know, women with spinal cord injuries can lead active and healthy sex lives. So it also showed that a court, um, you know, similar to other data that was collected, 56.3% of women in the study could have genital sensation. In, um, in their clitoris. So what that means is that a large percentage cannot feel um, <laughs> genital sensation. So in future research could study um, the other methods to orgasm that um, are beyond just the physiological. Also, 
and showed that 41.9% of the women in the study could reach arousal through just their imagination and pictures um, and psychological processes alone. Again, for further research, um, these type of mental processes might reveal um, very important things that can help women with spinal cord injuries um, and no feeling in their clitoris ha have um, orgasms and active sex lives. The last thing is that 66.7% of women in the study were happy with their sexual um, intercourses. So what this shows, although it's slightly below the national average, it shows that many women with spinal cord injuries do have happy and active sex lives. So again, it bursts those stereotypes um, and you know, it was very promising for the studies of um, women with spinal cord injuries. So the second part is they took, did a chi-squared analysis where they separated the women who had sex in the past year, which was 18 women, and the women who hadn't, which was 14. Um, then they s compared their answers to the different survey questions, and they found which factors are so significantly correlated with sexual activity. Only two were. First, being in a relationship, that's pretty like commonsensical. People in a relationship have more access to sexual partners. Um, secondly, having genital sensation, also <laughs> probably commonsensical. <laughs> People who have genital sensation have more um, incentive to have sex, and also it might correlate with uh, less, genital, or less genital injury. But what's really interesting is other factors like chronic pain, spasticity, incontinence, type of injury, time since, and time since the injury had no significant uh, correlation with sexual activity. What does this show? This shows this incredible promise that women with all kinds of spinal cord act, um, injuries have the ability to have active sex lives. Again, this breaks stereotypes and opens up the possibilities for many women across the world. So the limitations of this study, there is a small sample size of just over 32, or just over 30 participants. Um, there, could, there is a potentially biased sample since they all came from the same center in Spain. And also the valid validity of the questionnaire can be brought into question because you know maybe women weren't comfortable answering topics on these uh, about these sensitive issues. Um, and in conclusion, what this really this study shows is the intersection of sexual health and disability rights. So, um, the principles of sexual health, uh, as stated by the World Health Organization and the UN, state that every person deserves sexual pleasure and just or deserves the ability to um, to achieve or to pursue sexual pleasure um, and disability rights advocates and you know dis, uh, disability the disabled <laughs> disability rights um, show that people from all disabilities shouldn't be limited in their experiences just because of their disability so if we think about the intersection of these two identities um, we really have to consider how um, people with disabilities like spinal cord injuries can reach their full potential and can have a full um, sexual, full sexual experience. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you guys.